The 2023 trade deadline previews continue once again with the most interesting team, arguably, the Edmonton Oilers. The Oilers are obviously one of the better teams in the NHL at a 30-19-5 record for 65 points. They have scored 201 goals and only have 175, and they are 12th in the NHL. What I'm going to do with this now is I'm actually not going to take their projected cap. I'm actually going to take what their salary cap is plus the amount of LTIR money that they have as of right now. So currently, if I was looking at projected cap, they would have no money. But now that I'm including LTIR, they have $10.2 million in cap space. Which, when you look at all of the players that they are interested in, they're definitely going to have some money to work with. However, they do have some players that they may want to sign. You look at the 2023... UFAs, you have Derek Ryan starting off here. Obviously an interesting depth forward. We'll see if he sticks around. Matias Yanmark, he's been okay when he comes into the lineup. I don't I'm not really sure if that excuse me, that experience has really worked or that experiment, not experience. Um so we'll see if Yanmark gets signed. Uh Clef Blum is for sure gone. He hasn't played since I think 2020, or maybe even before that, in fact. Uh he's been hurt for a long time. He's definitely gone. Mike Smith, I I'm I'm gonna say it's safe to say that he's probably gone too. Uh if we are being brutally honest. And then as well as that too, uh I don't think Ryan Murray will stick around either. A look at their RFAs. There are some more interesting names there, starting off with Jesse Pugliarvi, who actually could become a big trade piece when you look at all of the players that they are interested in. And as well as that, Pugliarvi has been rumored to be placed on waivers. So we'll see if that happens as well. Additionally, you have three young forwards who have come up into the lineup and have played pretty well. Uh, Ryan McLeod does not get enough recognition for the good things that he does with the Edmonton Oilers, so he'll definitely get an interesting contract. Maybe it won't be like a long UFA deal, because obviously this team is going to be up against the cap crunch, especially if they get players um, in this year's deadline, but obviously McLeod deserves a solid contract. Clem Costin's played pretty solid too uh, when he's come up into the Oilers lineup. He's also a restricted free agent, so we'll see if he gets signed to a contract as well. Uh, then you also have Evan Bouchard as well, a player who has risen up into the lineup as a really solid defenseman selected in 2018, has become very useful for the Oilers, uh, so he will definitely get a pretty sizable contract uh, this offseason as well. In terms of buyers or sellers, I would honestly say that the Oilers are obviously buyers, of course, because they are interested in literally every single player at this year's trade deadline. And honestly, I'm not kidding. This is a pretty common thing with Ken Holland. He's going to be interested or there's going to be reports where they're interested in virtually every single player in the market. However, Holland almost never makes a move. And that's why I think that's the biggest thing when it comes to him 100% uh, in controversy. Absolutely. Uh, starting off with Patrick Kane. Um, there's been that rumor, honestly, I want to say for a while uh, I think dating back to like last offseason, saying that the Oilers and Patrick Kane could happen. Um, I even saw like one thing too, saying that the Oilers' number one priority was to get Patrick Kane, which I thought was just crazy. I'm like, really? He's not even like officially going to get traded yet, and you're already trying to, you're already interested in him, and you already want to go get him. It's just crazy to me, honestly. Uh, then you also have Eric Carlson there too, which I also think is extremely stupid. Uh, for the Oilers to make a move because he's different from a lot of the other, you know, players out there on the market 100%. Because when you look at somebody like, I can't, like John Klingberg, for example. I couldn't think of someone until, ever, until right now. John Klingberg, a defender, obviously with the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, I'm sure the Oilers are interested in him too. I don't have him listed here uh, because his advanced analytics have honestly been in the toilet. They have not been very good whatsoever, which I think could play a big role in what he gets signed to. Um, or what he, where he gets traded to, not what he gets signed to. He's already signed to a huge contract. Uh, where he gets traded to, uh, whether it's this year's deadline or in the offseason or next year's deadline, whenever they decide to trade, trade Eric Carlson, it's just dumb to me. It's honestly just really, really stupid um, for any team. And I made a video on this too, if, if I'm correct. I think it's just dumb to me that any team should go out and acquire Carlson. They shouldn't. Because first off, you're going to give up too much no matter how much you give, uh, 100%. Uh, I got to be honest with you, the only reason why he have, he's having such an electric offensive season with the Sharks is because that team is just not good. 
honestly. And sometimes players have breakout years like this. And Carlson has definitely helped them be a little bit better than what they were. But it's still astronomically dumb for, for the Oilers to go out and get him. Because he's locked up until like 2028. Like literally 2028 is when that guy like leaves. If I'm correct, it might be, it might be a little bit before that. It might be a little bit after that. I'm not sure, but he's definitely signed for a long ass time to a lot of money too. So it's just dumb in every aspect, in my opinion, for the Oilers to go out and get Eric Carlson. You look at some of the other players that they might be interested in. You have Vladislav Gavrikov, uh, obviously was scratched uh, a few days ago due to the trade related reasons. He may be traded before this video is uploaded, but that's definitely another interesting player there as well. Another defender. We'll see if Holland actually makes the move. Uh, then you also have Tyler Bertuzzi there as well, uh, who we talked about in the last preview. Now, the Red Wings honestly are going to get a lot less value back in return for Bertuzzi, but that doesn't mean the Oilers aren't interested, which is unironic. Uh, then you also have Joel Edmondson there as well, a Montreal Canadiens defender who has actually garnered some interest uh, from the Oilers as to no surprise. Of course he has. Uh, it, it literally does not surprise me at all when I found this out. Because, um, like, honestly, like, they're just interested in, like, it's mainly defenders, really. I mean, like, I think 95% of the players that I'm going to mention here are defenders. Literally, 95% of them, I think, are defensemen. And that's always what the Oilers have been interested in. It's always been defensemen or depth forwards. It's been one of those two things. And it just doesn't make sense to me uh, why they wouldn't at least try and go out and acquire them instead of just being like, oh, yeah, I'm interested, but I'm not going to make my move. It's like when you're interested in a girl and then you don't make the move. Like, it's stupid to me. Uh, then you also have Shane Goss to spare, too. Uh, Goss is bare, uh, defenseman for the Coyotes. I think he might, he might be back. I'm not sure yet. Uh, he will be returning pretty soon. If I'm correct, he's been hurt for a little bit, which definitely hurts his value, but the Oilers are still interested in him. Uh, they actually listed it as like a good alternative for Carlson, which is a great alternative for Carlson, but he, he should be the first priority in my opinion. Um, they also have Jacob Chicker in there too. I thought I'd throw him in, in here as well. I don't think he gets traded to the Oilers. I'd be shocked, honestly. Uh, but Chicker in there, obviously another interesting player um, to the Oilers' uh, blue line, just interest or whatever. The Oilers for sure definitely have the draft picks and the assets to make a move. They just don't want to. Uh, they have a first-round pick, a second-round pick, a third-round pick. Uh, no fourth this year, a fifth, a sixth, and a seventh. So obviously they have some draft picks to work with. Uh, we'll see if that happens, though. They do have some young forwards, but I think they're going to want to avoid trading those guys. Uh, Jesse Pugliarvi, of course, is another option I've seen uh, get popped up a few times as somebody who might get traded the other way. As we mentioned earlier, he's rumored to be on waivers, so we'll see. But what it feels like has been like three years now, or however long it's been since Ken Holland was fought, was hired, not fired, he hasn't been fired yet. Um, it feels like the Oilers have just always been like interested in players, but they've never made a move. Uh, I'm probably wrong, but I can't think of a move besides like the Duncan Keefe trade. Um, that like they've done in the past like three years. I I'm definitely wrong. I there's probably one that I'm not thinking about that's not coming to my head right now, which Oilers fans are gonna scream at me for. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, that's all I got for you for this deadline preview. Make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you all very much for watching. For all of your support as of late, I really do appreciate me to subscribe down below. If you are new, the next preview will be the Florida Panthers. But yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.